Welcome to the first in a series of our live online surgeries. Today's topic is audio, and more specifically, creating audio resources for podcasting. Before our live question and answer session begins, I'm going to quickly run through a couple of tips on how to enhance your recordings, how to make them more accessible, and ultimately make them look and sound more professional. Now this first tip is a way to make your recordings visually recognisable. Mobile devices give users a visual interface for navigating and identifying recordings. Now the most common delivery format at present for delivering audio via the web is the MP3 format, which has a complex and a very good method of compressing audio file sizes while still retaining good fidelity or good sound quality. MP3 files can store other data aside from just the audio, and this is known as embedded metadata. For more information on metadata, have a look at our website documents at www.gistdigitalmedia.ac.uk. Now one piece of data that can be included in our audio file, or MP3 file, is a picture. And for music, this is commonly an album cover. But this picture gets displayed with the audio file on a mobile device. Now you might have a logo, or some other picture file that you might wish the listener to see when they navigate to your file on their player. So how do we add a picture file to our sound file? For this I'm going to open my sound file in uh, iTunes, which is free software for PC and for Macs. Uh, you may have noticed that I'm actually using a Mac here, but the process I'm going to be doing is exactly the same as it is for a PC. Now I'd like to include a picture of the GIST Digital Media logo to my audio file, and uh, in two simple steps I'm just going to show you how we can do that. So here is my audio file in iTunes, and firstly I'm going to click on the box and triangle button along the bottom of the iTunes window. And you should see here a jagged box uh, should just appear just above that area. Now I'm going to simply drag and drop my picture file, which is at the moment it's situated on my desktop. I'm going to drag it from my desktop and drop it onto this jagged box, uh, just like so. And again, this is the same on a PC as it is for a Mac. And this is now adding this picture as the artwork to my audio track. And not only that, this is now going to update all the other tracks in iTunes uh, in the same album to include the same picture as it thinks it's the, uh, the artwork for the album. So that now when someone navigates to my recording on their mobile device, they will instantly be able to identify my recording with not only the text information, but with a picture as well. In this case, the Just Digital Media logo. A good point worth noting here is that the text information which gets displayed on the mobile device, in this case the artist, JDM, and the track name, Moonlight Sonata, needs to be embedded into the audio file, just like we've done with the picture. This information gets stored inside the audio file, and is different to the standard file name which is defined when you create the file. Now there are two ways of uh, embedding this information into our audio files. Firstly, there may be the option to do this when you render your production in your audio editing software. Now this data is contained in what's called ID3 tags, and different software offers different options on creating and the type of information you can put into these ID3 tags. Now let's have a look at, quickly at the Audacity software. Now this is free open source audio editing and a bit of production software. And this is the, uh, the page for entering your ID3 tag information. As you can see, we can add the title, the artist, the album, and the track number as well. Now the track number can be quite important, especially if you've got a series of recordings that you're releasing. Uh, and it helps uh, mobile devices and playback software to put your tracks in the order that you want them to be heard. Now this could be really handy, for example, if you're recording a series of lectures over the course of an academic year. Now the second approach can be a bit more long-winded, especially when you're working with a large number of audio files. But it's a good way of tagging your files that weren't tagged or weren't tagged correctly on creation. Again, using iTunes software, I can type in all the data surrounding the audio track, again, such as the artist name, the track name, and the track number, so it appears correctly on any mobile playback device or in the listener's playback software. OK, so we're now going to take a couple of steps back from the delivery side of our recordings and to look at the production side of things. So assuming you already have an audio recording of, say, a lecture or an interview, for example, I'm going to show you how you can add an ident to your recordings. Now, an audio ident is an identifier similar to the picture file we just looked at. It automatically allows the listener to identify the origin of the file, so they know that they are listening to one of your recordings. Now, audio idents are a good form of brand identity, be it for your department or institution. 
but importantly they provide better accessibility to your resources as a form of audibly tagging the sound file. Now there are many ways you can implement iDents, but I'm going to run through the procedure of arranging a sound effect and a spoken word tag to the beginning of a lecture recording. Okay, so here I am in the software Audacity, which is the open source free software I mentioned earlier, which is available to download online. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to import my audio files into the editing software, like so. Select these three, and it's placed them on three separate tracks for me. Now you can see the first track has only one waveform display, whereas the other two have two. That's because these are showing the left and right channels because they're stereo files. And the top track is just a mono file, so it has one waveform. Uh, but we can treat all these three files in exactly the same way. So, firstly, I'm just going to play each individual track one by one. Now, on the first track is the recording of the lecture. Hi, this is Steve Hull at JISC Digital Media, and this is the first in a series of lectures about quadratic equations. For the purposes of this exercise, this is only the beginning of a lecture, we don't really need the whole one. But that was quite a good intro. The lecturer gave us his name, where he was from, and the title of his lecture, so we don't need to include any of that in our tagging. My second file, on the second track, is the oral tag that I'd like to place at the beginning. Now this is a, again a pre-recorded file that was already done, with a bit of reverb effect added to it. This podcast was brought to you by the University of Bristol. And on the last track is the sound effect ident that I want to include at the beginning of the file. Okay, so now the first thing I need to do is to arrange all these files in the time domain so they all start and stop at the right places. I'd like my lecture to come in after my sound effect and my tag and I'd like my tag to come in just after the beginning of the ident. I can also see here that there's a bit of silence at the beginning of the ident file, so I can drag the ident to the start of my project using the drag tool in Audacity, uh, so it starts as soon as I press play and as soon as my rendered file will start. So just as a guide, I can see this is roughly where I want all my sounds to be, so I'm just going to play back and see what it sounds like. This podcast was brought to you by the University of Bristol. Hi, this is Steve Hull at JISC. Okay, so the first thing I noticed is the fact that the first two sounds are far too loud. You can see here on the level meters at the top of the screen that they've actually gone red, which means that the sound is distorting. So I'm going to need to bring the volume of these files down. Now, because I want to be able to hear the sound of the oral tag more than I do the sound effect, just here by sliding the gain slider down to minus 9 decibels. The second thing is that the sound effect goes on for quite a long time, so I'd like to shorten that to make my lecture start a little bit earlier. So in Audacity I can use the volume envelope tool to change the volume at various places of my sound effect. And just by adding some, creating some nodes and sliding this around I can create a fade out towards the end just like that, a little bit earlier. So I can drag my oral tag a bit further to the beginning and my lecture can start just as the sound effect is about to fade out. Okay, so put this all together and we can see how it sounds. This podcast was brought to you by the University of Bristol. Hi, this is Steve Hull at JISC Digital Media, and this is the first in a series of lectures about quadratic equations. So with just a few simple techniques, we've created a much more professional sounding recording that can be used for our podcast.